Hi, this is Sanjay Gangal from ADA Cafe. I'm here with Jeff Strang, General Manager, Power Management Products at Corvo. Uh, hello, Jeff. Hello, Sanjay. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Jeff. Uh, tell us about Corvo. Yeah, Corvo was formed in 2015, and it was the merger between RFMD, RF Micro Devices, and TriQuint. And we're a leader in RF components. Our, our parts are being used in applications like smartphones, Wi-Fi access points, radar systems. And now we're adding to our product portfolio. And actually, over the years, we've been building up our power products. Uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about more today. So those are products for applications like uh, power management ICs in solid state drives and battery management for uh, home energy storage and silicon carbide products too. We recently acquired United Silicon Carbide out of Princeton, New Jersey. Mm. So we've we've got this great RF product base. We've got this power management story that uh, people are learning about, and it's uh, it's a very exciting, very exciting time for us at Corvo on the power side. Okay, and and you uh, recently launched uh, Q Spice as well. Uh, and so how does Q Spice address the primary challenges that power and analog designers face in circuit simulation today. Right. QSpice is a, a really exciting uh, tool for us. It's a new, fast, free, mixed mode simulator that also does schematic capture for power and analog circuits. It offers what I'd say is better spice fundamentals. It's just a better spice engine. And it also lets you simulate massive amounts of digital. And that's a novel thing for a simulator that's just available to the public. Uh, it's really designed to solve today's engineering challenges. So innovation in power electronics, it used to be that you had an analog control loop, you had silicon MOSFETs, you put those together, and that was your new power converter. But today there's tremendous opportunities around digital architectures and new power switch technologies like silicon carbide. So although even Corvo is still doing a lot of innovation with analog control and silicon FETs, there's this whole new world of opportunities out there that's difficult to model and simulate without a good mixed mode simulator. So that's what QSpice gives you. Uh, engineers that are, are trying to invent things for this more complicated world with more advanced power architectures can use QSpice. It, it lets them not only have a high performance spice engine, but also the ability to simulate digital, large amounts of digital. Mm. <clears throat> can you highlight the key technological features that allow QSpice to achieve its improvements in simulation speed and accuracy? Sure. We've made a lot of improvements with QSpice. Uh, I think it's been years since anybody's really built a new SPICE simulator from the ground up. And we've done that. We're taking full advantage of modern client computing hardware like solid state drives. Uh, when SPICE engines, when SPICE was invented 50 years ago, SSDs didn't exist and I'm not even sure personal computers really existed in 1973. So um, you know, a lot, lot has come along since the engine was first developed. Uh, but even aside from things like solid state drives and faster processors, we're using a GPU for waveform plotting. Uh, it might not sound like a big thing because every Windows 10, Windows 11 computer has a GPU in it, but it turns out that it's really useful for uh, Spice engines to be able to render the data very accurately on the screen. A GPU is probably 100,000 times faster than the CPU when it comes to plotting points and a waveform viewer. And that's good because it means you don't have to compress the waveform and lose data. Uh, you can display every data point in that simulation result on screen and, and render it uh, very quickly. So that, that's something that's really obvious to a user. There are other under the hood changes to that original 1973 Berkeley Spice code that also lead to better, faster results. And we could get into the technical details, but there's things like a device discontinuities in the IV curve. Uh, those are bugs in the original Berkeley Spice code. And by fixing them, we allow the simulations to complete uh, more accurately and, and more reliably. Uh, there's also a thing called a time step control, a new error-based time, time step control. It lets you get better resolution around the, the points of interest in your simulation. Uh, when, when things are happening rapidly, you get more data, and when things aren't changing much, you get less data, and we've got a really nice algorithm for that. Yeah. And uh, what sets QSpice apart from other popular spice simulators? Yeah, well, I, I mentioned a couple of those innovations, and over the years, we've accumulated a set of 
circuit models that have been a challenge for other space engines to successfully simulate. QSpace is the first engine we've seen that can succeed on all of those torture tests. This is a set of 60 some circuits and other space engines out there that we benchmarked fail on. We see up to about 15% of those cases. They just can't run the simulation. It's really frustrating when you're a user and you're trying to model something and you can't figure out if the engine is broken or if your model's broken or if something else is happening. By making sure we can run all of those torture tests, uh, we make sure that you're going to have a really good experience and that you don't have to worry about QSpice itself uh, keeping your system from simulating. Uh, and on top of all that, we're usually faster than the other SPICE engines. And uh, on top of that, um, we allow this digital simulation that is a really big deal. So I mentioned that today designers are using more advanced algorithms. They're not just using analog control loops. So what we allow you to do is type in some code and simulate it alongside the analog circuitry that you're already simulating in the SPICE engine. This is a big deal. Uh, to my knowledge, QSpice is the only free mixed mode simulator out there that includes schematic capture and the ability to compile and run digital code alongside the analog circuitry. So historically, SPICE is just an analog circuit simulator. So now you can write some Verilog code, which is what chip designers do. You can write C++ code and click a button, compile that, and be doing high-speed digital simulation next to analog simulation. And, and the digital, in fact, even simulates faster than it would in real hardware because you're running it on your desktop or notebook computer at native uh, Intel processor or AMD processor speed. So I think you already gave one example, but can you provide other real world examples where QSpice's mixed mode simulation capabilities would be especially beneficial? Sure. Uh, it does, like I said, have this unique ability to combine the digital and the analog and to do it all fast. The analog's fast, the digital's even faster. Uh, so a good example of a problem that people are trying to solve today, I know that AI is, is the catchphrase of the year, but it, it's true. Machine learning and AI are interesting challenges and people are putting a lot of R&D into them. So a, a great practical example, because we can run Verilog code, you can go grab a RISC-V processor, a Verilog open source code base, the thing that you use to build the RISC-V processor. You can load that into a QSpice code block. You can compile that. You can then load in code uh, for a tiny ML algorithm that runs on RISC-V. You can simulate all of that. And you can simulate it next to your motor driver and your motor model and do all that analog simulation together. Or if you're trying to figure out how to make batteries charge more effectively, how to get more charge cycles out of them, you can put your battery model in there and you can run your machine learning algorithms. So you don't have to have a physical test bench if you don't want to worry about blowing up a battery or having a big motor. Uh, this is the type of, of application that we envision our users for QSpice doing that you really just can't do any other way. No, no Q, you're offering QSpice for free of charge. Uh, so what is your strategy to ensure its continuous development, its support in the long run? Right, yeah, that's a great question. Why would we give it away for free? And, and are we really committed to it if we're giving it away for free? These are, I think, kind of the underlying questions. Mm -hmm. we're, we're giving it away for free because we are uh, working on building brand awareness for Corvo when it comes to power and analog. We already have a great brand for RF, and we want to get the story out about power and analog and all the exciting things we're doing there. Uh, so that's that's the reason that we're giving it away for free. Uh, we are committed to it for the long term because if you're gonna build your brand and you're gonna build a following, you're not just gonna work on something for a year and then set it aside. So um, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna keep this as a, a differentiated tool for Corvo and we're planning on long-term development support. Okay, uh, now um, yeah, the, the, there are a number of other spice simulators out there and uh, king of all spice simulators uh, for last 30, 40 year, uh, years has been HSpice, which is currently owned by uh, Synopsys. And mm -hmm. uh, it claims the best in accuracy and all the foundries uh, rely on it. And also uh, uh, for every new process, they go through extensive uh, parameter generation, uh, which are sometimes proprietary, used to be called level 28 uh, in HSpice. 
uh, and and that used to give it the ultimate accuracy that uh, a lot of the basic cell libraries are, are need uh, to build bigger blocks. Uh, so how does QSpice achieve the level of accuracy that HSpice might have? Right. So HSpice, as you said, is really uh, a lot of focus with HSpice is around IC design, right? And we uh, today aren't really supporting IC design with QSpice. It's not, not really the purpose of it today. There's no reason we couldn't extend its functionality to do that, but it does feel like Cadence and Synopsys and Mentor Graphics, they have systems that, that do this type of stuff already. Uh, so where we envision QSpice is for people that are building circuits, they want to model an IC that already exists. Uh, they want to run a system level simulation. And again, the mixed mode simulation is a, a pretty interesting capability. Uh, and maybe they don't want to go buy an expensive license for uh, HSpice in your example. Uh, and, and a lot of a lot of smaller businesses or hobbyists or educational users can't go buy a multi-thousand dollar license for a program. Uh, so that's the beauty of QSpice. We're making this capability available for free. Uh, and one of the things we're doing around that is building a user community around QSpice. And because it's available for everybody, uh, it makes it easy for people to adopt it. So we envision a large community or ecosystem of users across multiple companies throughout the electronics industry that are, are going to be using QSpice. Okay. And uh, uh, what is the best way for our audience to find out more about QSpice on the internet? Sure. The easiest way is to start by visiting www.qspice.com. From there, you can download it. All we ask for is a valid email address. And if you want to give us your name, that's great. Uh, and then from there, we'll email you a download link. You can download it and install it. Uh, one nice thing about it, too, is that you don't need administrator rights on your computer to install it. So if you're on a corporate PC and you don't have the ability to install as an administrator, you don't need that. You can install it as a regular user. Uh, that's actually a pretty nice, handy feature. But you can get that information. You can get the Getting Started videos. You can get access to our forum at forum.corvo.com, uh, all from www.qspice.com. Okay, and uh, uh, can I ask you a few personal questions? Sure. Uh, so what do you do for fun outside work or what is your personal passion? Yeah, uh, well, I've got a couple kids, so I like to spend a lot of time with them when I'm not working. And beyond that, I really I love home improvement projects. And hmm. I it sounds a little silly, but I installed gutter guards last weekend and thought that was a lot of fun. And I'm really curious. <laughs> With this North Carolina pine straw, if we're going to clog up the gutter guards or not, I've always been skeptical of them, but we'll see. Uh, are, are you more into maintenance mode or are you building new stuff for hobby projects as well? Yeah, well, our house is about 10 years old, so some things are starting to need refreshes, like we're doing some repainting and, and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, I, I like the construction projects too. Okay, okay. And uh, can you tell us something about yourself that most people at Corvo who work with you don't know about you? Sure. Uh, I started my electronics career working for a hi-fi vacuum tube audio company called Valve Amplification Company. They're still in business down in Sarasota, Florida. So they build high-end audio amplifiers that are focused on sound quality and they look beautiful because they use vacuum tubes and so they glow in the dark. That was a dream job for me. I had taught myself in school how to build uh, audio amplifiers with tubes. And just as a little aside, tubes are a great learning tool because unlike a transistor, if you power it on and you've wired something up wrong, you can see the tube start to glow orange and you have time to turn it off before you damage it. With a MOSFET, you turn it on, it blows up and you have to replace the FET and rebuild your amp. Great educational tool. But anyway, they're still in business. Uh, loved the job and it really inspired me to just grow in my electrical engineering career. Wow. wow. And a final question. Uh, cats or dogs? <laughs> we have both. Uh, we got the cat first. He wasn't quite as affectionate as we wanted. So we got the dog <laughs> and now they love to play together. <laughs> okay. And what type of dog do you have? A golden doodle, a little black golden doodle, mini golden doodle. Oh, they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, thank hard. you so much, uh, Jeff, for taking time to record this interview. Have a great day and stay safe. All right. Thank you, too. Okay, this is Sanjay Gangal from EDA Cafe.